Okay, let's uh, let's talk about ADHD. And um, how many of you know what ADHD is? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, there are a couple of things that even educational staff don't always know about ADHD. So uh, pardon me if, I, if I'm telling you stuff you already know, but this is something that does still come up a lot. Um, it used to be the case that people were diagnosed specifically with ADD or ADHD. I will still have people come into clinic all the time as adults who say, well, I have ADD, but I don't have ADHD, as if they're two completely separate animals, right? The reality is that it's all the same sort of. It's all considered to be the same disorder, but with three pretty dramatically different presentations that people tend to fall loosely within. Um, there is a predominantly inattentive type, and these are kids who are daydreamers and doddlers and lack attention and lack focus and have to re be redirected back to task repeatedly over time. Those are the predominantly inattentive kids. But they're not necessarily, they're not bouncing off the walls usually. They're just not mentally there, right? Then you have the hyperactive impulsive type kids. And these are the kids who are fidgeters and they are restless and they are moving all the time and they can't stop <laughs> touching things and they put stuff in their mouth and they chew on their shirts and um, they blurt things out and they forget to raise their hand and they leave the room without permission um, and they bounce off the walls when they're younger a lot of times. But sometimes they do that while hearing every single thing you said, right? So sometimes their body is in high motion, but their attention and focus is just fine. My, my little guy that I mentioned that, that was adopted from foster care, this is his, this is his type. So he will be doing 70,000 things, looking everywhere but at you, busy, 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 moving, 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 and you'll say, all right, now what did I just say? Thinking you got him, right? And he will repeat back word for word everything that you said, okay? Then there's a combined type, and these kids are hit the worst because they have significant symptoms of both, all right? So their bodies are overactive and they have trouble focusing and attending and sitting still and all of it. So it's, it's just all of it at once. Um, other things come along with it as well. So they tend to lose items more. They tend to lack follow through, lack organization. See, I made it bounce, right? Because it's ADHD. Okay. You want me to do it again? Okay. Um, impulsivity comes with it. So acting without thinking. Doing something you know is a stupid idea, and you can tell them people later why it was a stupid idea, but you do it anyway because you're impulsive. Poor decision making and emotional reactivity. Um, typically, kids with ADHD and especially hyperactive impulsive type have trouble regulating their emotions. This means they tend to be more irritable, they tend to fire easier, um, but it also means when they get silly and they get loud, they have more trouble calming down and regulating that emotion, really any emotion, <laughs> any emotion you can think of, they have more trouble coming down from it than their typical peers would. Um, and that can cause a lot of problems. <clears throat> so these are some things that aren't always known about ADHD. So I have been over the last 12, 15 years in a million and seven IEP meetings. And I cannot tell you how many times um, staff has said to me, well, yes, he has ADHD, but this particular behavior is not ADHD. He just doesn't want to do it. He's just being lazy. And here's how I know, you know? Um, and so what, what is, it is often the case that classroom teachers who have not had particular training believe that it's simply about the activity level and it's simply about the concentration level and they don't understand the impact of the rest of it. For example, we talked earlier about the, the conductor of the orchestra, right? That frontal lobe impairment, executive functioning. One of the biggest impacts that that has on kids is, I know what I'm supposed to be doing, but I can't do it when I need to do it. It's that implementation error, right? It's that taking what you know and making it work. And it's the breakdown. And so a lot of times in school settings, people will, will see that as evidence of non-compliance or opposition. Sometimes it is, because these are kids after all. But sometimes it really simply is an implementation error. I know what I'm supposed to do. I just, I just can't do it when I need to do it. I can't pull it up when I need it. Disinhibition problems. Again, if you go back about 20 years and you think about how ADHD was conceptualized, 
they used to conceptualize ADHD as an inability to pay attention, right? But now, through a whole bunch of research, most of it by this Russell Barkley guy I was talking about earlier, who retired, darn it, but he's, he's like, read anything you can by Russell Barkley. He's the guy. Um, most of the research was done by him. And what they discovered is that it really, most of the time, ADHD is a behavioral disinhibition disorder. So it isn't so much that I can't pay attention, it's that I can't stop paying attention. So, say there's a truck going by outside here. And we're all sitting here and we all hear it. And I hear it, but I keep talking because I can inhibit my response to say, hey, what's that truck doing? I wonder where it's going. And, and what's it carrying? And let me see, is it a big red truck? Because I'm doing something else instead, so I'm inhibiting that. Kids with ADHD have a lot of trouble inhibiting other stimuli. Does that make sense? So it's not really that they're not paying attention. A lot of the time, they're paying way too much attention to absolutely freaking everything. And that's what's causing the problem. And, and the gentleman here, what's your name, sir, so I don't keep calling you the gentleman here? Me? Yes. Mike. Mike. Yes. Mike referred to this earlier. You can find a strategy that works super good with a kiddo with ADHD for about two weeks. And then it stops working. And one of the main reasons for this is that kids with ADHD have been shown to have faster habituation to preferred stimuli. Okay? What that means is... Things that are reinforcing don't stay reinforcing as long. I love chocolate chip cheesecake. I really do. But if I had chocolate chip cheesecake every night, pretty soon, eh, okay, soon, like a month, two months, every night, um, I wouldn't care for it as much anymore. For a kiddo with ADHD, that might happen in two or three days, that habituation. So a lot of our behavioral programming for kids with ADHD depends, it depends upon motivation. Motivation is very important. We motiv motivate by reinforcers, but reinforcers burn out really, really fast. So they are, from a motivation perspective, a moving target, and that makes things difficult. So you'll see staff, a lot of times, who will be frustrated because they're trying to implement programs that work with non-ADHD kids very well, and they won't work very long. And so they throw their hands up, and they get burned out. And the reason they're getting burned out is because the kids are habituating like crazy cakes to pretty good strategies. ADHD kids also have higher thresholds of interest, which means that things that would be interesting to someone without ADHD are boring to them. Things that, they need things to be more intense. They talk louder, you've probably noticed that. Studies show they respond better to males' voices. Why? Because they're louder. Because they're louder, they're bigger. So they have higher thresholds of interest and attention and notice than kids without ADHD do. They also tend to be more concrete, again, because of these frontal lobe issues. So that means, um, I, I usually think of it when we're designing a behavioral program for a child with ADHD, that we might need to approach it as if they were two or three years younger than they are. Not because of their cognitively delayed, but because in terms of how they approach things, they are more concrete than their same age peers. And so, for example, if we have a, a student that normally, say maybe age eight or nine, then normally we could have a reinforcer program that would go a week. With an ADHD kid, I might say, no, let's pretend he's five or six. How long would we go for a motivation program with a kid who's five or six? Because that's how concrete they often are. And it has nothing to do with intelligence. It's something completely different. <clears throat> 